So ABC host David Muir, I think that's how you say his name, um, he asked a really terrible question here on foreign policy, and then Bernie and Biden got into it over this. Um, so Bernard ends up dropping the people's elbow, which is glorious, but the thing that really got under my skin more than anything was the framing of the question. Take a look. Biden, because the concerns about uh, any possible vacuum being created, being created in Afghanistan if you pull the U.S. troops out uh, has been heightened by what we've seen in recent days on the ground in Iraq. Uh, when you were vice president, President Obama turned to you to bring the troops home from Iraq. You have said on the campaign trail, quote, I made sure the president turned to me and said, Joe, get our combat troops out of Iraq. There was a major drawdown of U.S. troops, and then ISIS seized, by some estimates, 40 percent of the territory in Iraq. You then had to send thousands of troops back in. Was it wrong to pull out of Iraq that quickly, and did the move actually help ISIS take hold? No, it wasn't wrong to pull up. I want to answer an Afghanistan question. I've been in and out of Afghanistan, not with a gun, and I admire my friend uh, for his service. But I've been out of Afghanistan, I think, more than anybody on this, on this, and it's an open secret. You reported a long time ago, George, that I was opposed to the surge in Afghanistan. The whole purpose of going to Afghanistan was to not have a counterinsurgency, meaning that we're going to put that country together. It can not be put together. With regard to, uh, with, with regard to um, uh, Iraq, the fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, I should have never voted to give Bush the authority to go in and do what he said he was going to do. The AUMF was designed, he said, to go in and get the Security Council to vote 15 to nothing to allow inspectors to go in to determine whether or not anything was being done with chemical weapons or nuclear weapons. And when that happened, he went ahead and went anyway without any of that proof. You talked about the big mistake uh, in Iraq and the surge. The truth is, the big mistake, the huge mistake, and one of the big differences between you and me, I never believed what Cheney and Bush said about Iraq. We voted against the war in Iraq and helped lead the opposition. And it's sad to say, I mean, I kind of, you know, had the feeling that there would be massive destabilization in that area uh, if we went into that war. Uh, as the former chairman of the Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs, I want to pick up on what Pete said, we cannot express our gratitude to all of the men and women who have put their lives on the line to defend them, defend us, who have responded to the call of duty. But I think also I am the only person up here to have voted against all three of Trump's military budgets. I don't think... We have to spend $750 billion a year on the military when we don't even know who our enemy is. That was awesome. Um, and that was a very, very, very subtle dig at Elizabeth Warren as well, which is exactly the kind of digs I'm in favor of when it comes to her. You got to be a little more careful because she's a closer ideological ally with you than anybody else, okay? And they have done some awesome tag teams against other people, which you love to see it, you love to see it. But you still have to make distinctions between you and her. And that's a really, really, really powerful one that he made without even, you know, like, rubbing it in. But he's like, I'm the only one up here, man. I'm the only one up here that voted against all of Trump's military budget. Hell yes. Hell yes. And by the way, it is infuriating that virtually the entire Democratic Party in Washington, D.C. loves to scream about how, oh my God, Donald Trump is a thin-skinned maniac lunatic who shouldn't have his finger anywhere near the red button. He's unfit for office. And oh yeah, I'm going to give a $100 billion increase in military spending to him. And I'm going to give him also increased NSA spying powers. Half the idiots in D.C. say, oh, uh, Trump is a puppet to Vladimir Putin and he's a Manchurian candidate. And then they turned around and voted to give him more NSA spying powers. So that means you're literally in favor of also giving Putin spying powers. Because that's what you say you believe. So they're, they're so full of shit. But Bernie's principled. And he voted against those military budgets because he doesn't believe in them. So I love that. Um... Making the distinction again between him and uh, Joe Biden on the war in Iraq. I never believed Cheney and Bush. Nailed it. Because guess what? What does that show you? Joe Biden, in the heat of the moment, 
will always do what's polit politically convenient and easy. And all the pressure was from the establishment to be pro-war, and so he buckled. And he was, like, very vociferously arguing in favor of that early on. So what happens the next time there's this massive push towards war? You want somebody in there who's objective and who's rational, who's going to go, I don't know about all this. I don't know about all this. So um, that's why Bernie's just in another league. But the framing of the question pissed me off more than anything, guys. I have to tell you, because he said... He framed it as, what about the vacuum that was created in Iraq when you pulled out? Did you pull out of Iraq too quickly? Are you kidding me? See, the framing of that question is pro-war. The framing of the question is, hey, isn't it the more reasonable thing? Isn't it the more adult thing to stay in there longer? Or if you do withdraw, withdraw slower? No, the problem was that we ever went in there in the first place! That's the problem, full stop, end of conversation. You didn't see it in this clip. But later on in this exchange, or perhaps it was earlier on, I don't remember, but it was in the exchange about war. Another question from David Muir was framed from the perspective of, what about the generals? What happens if the generals come in and tell you, sir, it's not a good idea to withdraw our troops? Are you kidding me? We've been in Iraq since 2003. We've been in Afghanistan since 2001. 18 years we've been in Afghanistan. How much longer, David? See, he pretends, the question pretends as if the generals are just objective ar arbiters of truth when they're actually massively political actors. And oftentimes they're pro-war when it makes no sense to be. Look at what happened with Vietnam. Generals kept prodding Lyndon B. Johnson and saying, oh, no, no, we, we need more troops. We need more funding. We got to stay there. We got to complete the mission. No end in sight. It's the same thing here. When all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Generals are massively pro-war. Go figure. So it's not like he frames it as if like, What about generals? Oh, would you listen to the wonderful generals? And the setup is, if you say no, well, aren't you unserious? Like, that's the setup to it. When, of course, it's the exact opposite. The unserious thing is the fucking question. Everything framed from a right-wing perspective, a pro-war perspective, a pro-fiscal conservative perspective. Hey, you pay Never how you gonna pay for it for war. Did you notice that? Never that. But how you gonna pay for it for anything that helps average people? Insufferable, but still, Bernie knocked it out of the park.